being able to speak is not the same as not speaking. You seem as if you like to talk. I like to let people talk who like to talk. It makes it easier to find out how full of shit they are. What the hell did you just say? You are the new student. Come closer. You're listening to the Kung Fu Podcast presented by James Still. Anybody who has some knowledge of Kung Fu can easily defeat you. And Steve Newby. Man, you come right out of a comic book. If you flash him, even for an instant, a defiant eye, he'll pluck it out. And if you throw any American sass his way, He'll snap your back and your neck like they were twigs. Can you just talk? Talk. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? What do you think of that? Um, well. Self destruct sequence activated. Oh no. Self destruct sequence activated. <laughs> I don't, do, stop 64. what you've done. Stop what you've done. Stop what you've done. You, you activate the stuff. This is you and technology. You see, it's it's that bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's actually quite good. Right? Are we uh, are we good to go? Or do you want to yeah, do a briefing before we go? Give me a briefing if you want. Yeah, it'd be mm. nice to have a briefing for a change. <laughs> I was only joking. Of course, there's no briefings. Uh, like, oh, right. What do you think this is? I'm just a little professional. Right, guys. <laughs> okay. Welcome to another episode of the Kung Fu Podcast with me, James Still, and as ever, my teacher, Mr. Steve Newby, live from mm. uh, Canada. How are you doing, Steve? You all right? Yeah, good. Yeah, beautiful day today. I might be going out in the canoe at some point in time oh, this oh, week. Oh, well, well, watch out. Watch out, everybody. He's out. He's on. <laughs> he's seafaring again. You know, that reminds yeah. me, you know, it occurred to me the other day, we're like, you know, a, a barnacle on the hull of the good ship Kung Fu. <laughs> that's pretty much our podcast. <laughs> that's, that's us, isn't it, in a nutshell, you know. Yeah. But, uh, well, we've got some, uh, we've got a few topics we want to discuss today. We're, we're, we're going to get a bit I don't know, should we get bitchy again? Should we get bitchy? That's no, I mean, getting a bit bitchy. No, I don't mind no. getting bitchy. No one else is going to do it, so. That's true, that's true. We've got some stuff we want to talk about. But before we do get, you know, uh, bitchy, um, it's worth saying, we might be having a guest on the podcast. Is this right? And we're not going to say who, but we might well, be we've been a looking, guest. We, yeah, we've been looking for, you know, people who might want to participate, promote people, and hopefully make, you know, some sense of what is martial arts today and i think we've mm. we've found a, a, a you know a good friend of mine um you know one of uh Laugar's top people i can say can i say that you can say that but you can't say anything else just in case uh, it doesn't happen <laughs> <laughs> you never know you never know I yeah mean, well i've spoken to him at length and we've uh, we've briefed him and everything okay and does he does he know we're gonna we're, be, we're gonna be really yeah we're gonna be really good on the day oh, we're not right, gonna okay. bitch Oh, you, I'm gonna hey. do anything. We're going to let him do all the bitching. Oh, He's okay. going to do all the talking. Well, it's, if, if, so. you know, no one's as bitchy as us, apart from a bus full of drag queens. But you know, oh well. <laughs> so right, we we should. So that was that's good news. That's good news. We might be getting a mm. guest on. Ah, second second bit of news, right? And this is where we'll start off. Now you remember a couple of weeks back we did these reaction videos, right? And uh -huh. uh, now, it has come to my attention through my tireless scouting of Facebook and certain social media sites that we have provoked mm. a bit of a reaction. Now, oh, you always will with you these do, things. You do, but however, what I thought was very interesting was the reaction um, mm -hmm. by uh, the person we did the reaction video about his instructor now i'm not going to say who because there's no i'm not wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. what do you mean his instructor oh sorry excuse me one of his instructors the the latest instructor the you know the, you know the current incarnation so it's uh, mm. it's a bit like doctor who you know as one dies <laughs> you get another one. <laughs> and another one another one you know i think we're on another John, one bites are we on, of dust are we on John another Bertwee? one bites of dust <laughs> 
But however, listen, we can we can laugh, but it's actually a very a bit of a serious thing, right? And I'm going to. It's serious to people, but it's not serious to me. You know, at the end of the day, just. Okay, all right, but but I want to I want to hear your opinions on this because we've got a bit of a serious. Now, it's it's a bit of a rant on Facebook by this this you know instructor blo- bloke. The uh, is it um, on his site? It's on his site. Okay. Um, well, it's, no, it's, no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, Don't, sorry. Let, let me let me just go on. Let me just go on. Now, okay. what what so what it is is it's because uh, we don't know whether it's re- in relation to to us doing these videos that uh he's he's sparked up in defense of his current student or whatever or, or mm. whatever you know but i'm going to read it out to you um so here we go <sighs> sorry i had to burp there <laughs> <laughs> jesus what? Yeah, ever the okay. professional, James. Right. Okay, yeah, I know. Of ever course. the professional. Hey, of course, of course, of course. Okay, right. Serious time. Okay, so I want your reaction to this um, to this uh, statement. Okay, it's okay, common. It's common knowledge that I don't like bullies in the martial arts, in life, or social media. When people go on about standards and muck dojos in the arts, my first thought is people in glass houses, etc. They are usually the people who should be putting their own house in order, exclamation mark. We may not like what some people teach, but if they're not breaking any laws, we don't have the right to bully, slander, or libel them. What we need to do is everything in our power to raise the standards of the arts, generally, in whatever area we train and teach in, and continually encourage others to improve and point to what is good all the time we point at others in a negative way we only demonstrate our own failings and the last bit was if we work together instead of against each other and share our knowledge and systems it can only be for good martial arts have a lot to offer the public but when they see senior people arguing like children in a school playground and those that teach anti-bullying pointing laughing and ridiculing others it really puts us all in a bad light now that was the post now it's unconfirmed whether that was in relation to what we've done but um it's interesting timing so i i i put it to a coincidence but even if it's not it's worth just talking about um your thoughts on 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 that given that we've done these reaction videos go for it oh right okay so we have done reaction videos that's true first um i mean shall i assume that it is about us or me bullying somebody or should i just say in general it could be about someone bullying don't know anyway don't care Mm -hmm. okay first of all i absolutely love what he said Okay, I think it's really commendable what he has said. Yeah. The only problem is this. First of all, um, so the person that I have, and, and of course we don't know it's about us, so no, we just have no, to No, we assume. just have to assume. Yeah. So the person that I, I have done a reaction video to was a student of mine. Okay, so I have a relationship with the student, or did have a relationship with the student, who was a quite a difficult student and um, without going into any history basically he's gone okay so got rid of him and uh, a lot of bad blood kind of thing going on and we we probably heard a uh, uh, podcast from before about the situation I was put in by people like him mm-hmm. um, and that but that's you know water under the bridge and so on but uh, what it gives me is a qualification to talk about this individual It also gives me a qualification. What he's doing, what he's teaching, is my qualification to be able to uh, judge it in the sense that, first of all, I taught it to him. And secondly, he he didn't really listen because he's the only individual ever to have filed a black sash under me. And he never took a black sash after that. And he's not a black sash, but he professes to be yeah. a black sash and teaches that style. Yeah. So therefore, th- those were the, that was the criteria why I actually 
did these um, reaction videos to him. Yeah. And I continue to watch him doing these things. Yeah. Now, I have to ask people like that when they say wonderful things, am I bullying, right? Yeah. Or am I defending the faith right. <laughs> in effect? Okay. So in other words, uh, so as I, if I'm bullying someone or if I'm protecting the people that have been um, had the wall pulled over their eye, pulled over their eyes, so that they believe that he has some kind of quality. Now, yeah. from the, where this guy is coming from, and uh, no names or anything, I, I don't know his name. I'm just going from what you have said, and I know that you don't like to give me any names because I'll only name them. <laughs> well, we've had this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I don't give a toss because you know I, I call a spade a spade, yeah. and if the guy wants to say something, then um, you know that's uh, it's, it's absolutely up to him, and and I would absolutely love to discuss it with him mm. because the one thing I think people have to say when they see me doing a reaction video is, well, okay, so what's your qualification to do it? Well, I've just given you my qualification, and. Um, uh, what's your story about it? What's your take on the situation mm. that uh, brought you to that conclusion? Yeah. And so if anyone's got any gorm, they would, you know, give me a call or, or email you or email the, the site and say, you know, OK, so you've been saying this about this guy. Um, I just need to know where you're coming from, mm. because obviously he's now teaching for me or he's training with me. Yeah. And I'd like to think that uh, you know we're free to do what we want and of course everybody is free to do what they want everybody but the problem is i like genuine martial arts i yeah. don't like bullshit martial arts yeah. i don't like people making their own style up i don't like people jumping from one style in order to just uh you know profit from another mm. i don't like people who turn around and charge you know thousands of pounds in order to do a course when you look at the quality of that course on Facebook and let's face it if you're gonna put stuff on YouTube you better be damn you know decent or at least have the knowledge I, I understand if you're old and gray like me and you don't have you know the prowess that you might have had when you were in your 20s yeah. and you may not be capable of throwing yourself around in the same way forget it just you've got a brain you've got intelligence you've got knowledge and if you profess to have knowledge in martial arts and you have a quality of martial arts show it the problem show it on a video yeah, yeah. the problem you've got with a couple of points okay so the problem you've got yeah. you see a lot of people like this this person who's who's and i'll talk a bit about him because we're not mentioning names you know it could be anybody couldn't it eh? yeah, yeah now yeah, yeah. problem you've got is when you're doing these reaction videos you look like you're having fun all right but you know <laughs> right you're like, <laughs> but you know we're not, we're not serious but hey looks looks are you know are important i guess and secondly um the person who who's made this statement you know unfortunately steve i mean i hate to say it yes he's a very prominent figure in uk based martial arts but but first and foremost he runs a big martial art business he he he, he runs his own governing body okay oh, he right, yeah. he he yeah. encourages people to and uh, you know he's done this martial art where he's an eighth dan he's done this martial art where he's a first dan in this jiu-jitsu blah 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 okay so he's one of these people who throughout the years has studied a certain way now the mm. problem you've got with it is then he'll sort of turn around and start marketing kung fu okay now mm -hmm. all right you can get into a semantical debate about kung fu meaning well it just means hard work you know but let's face mm. it if you're if you're marketing kung fu but you've studied karate for your your formative years okay yeah. that's what you know but you're yeah. you're calling it kung fu people expect it to be kung fu but you know mm, then but the trouble go, is yeah. yeah i was going to sorry the trouble is the general public doesn't know the difference no no they and don't. they join thinking they're doing kung fu and then yeah. actual fact they're doing something that has been put together yeah. i mean what is he suggesting that if, if if i gave people because this guy was obviously a student of mine yeah so you know that i'm bullying if i give people uh the opportunities and the freedom to make their own decisions uh and, and trust them 
to lead by example. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And then suddenly, uh, and I encourage them to think, I encourage them to think for themselves, if you like. Um, and then they conspire through greed or envy, or both, and betray the very trust that you give them. You know, mm. I've got to, I've got to lose my, well, shall we say, in integrity. As I know you've discussed that with me, yeah, yeah. So is is that what people like that are suggesting that I'm I'm kind of got no, you know, if you like, uh, well, that I'm a bully basically. Uh, I'm bullying this individual. Yeah. No, I'm not bullying him. I'm simply warning people. And uh, have I got a right to warn people? Ah. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's a simple, because we've, it's, we've said that's it the simple answer. We've said it before. Yeah. If if this was like Watchdog or Rogue Traders, you'd want yeah. these bad, you know, plumbers and and builders to be called out. Yeah. Now, you know, the problem with martial arts, though, mm -hmm. you you like, I'm sure you know, it's a very sort of relative thing, isn't it? Like one person's martial art might be, you know, teaching Tai Chi to a group of OAPs for yeah. health and relaxation. Whereas another person's mar martial art might be, you know, in a friggin octagon, batting, battering the crap out of each other. So it's all relative now. So yeah, this is yeah. where the argument, oh, but just let him do his own thing. It's like, well, no, because he is blatantly ripping off the syllabus that he has been taught, laid out by the BKFA, you know, and, and, and blatantly ripping off, you know, your, your and teaching, teaching it badly. Yes, and, and, yeah, totally. and when he and he's and he's teaching it badly and expects that he's not going to get any kind of complaints. Well, yeah. in effect, this is a complaint. I want to tell you a story, James. Go I on. hope that we don't want to bore the listeners oh, <laughs> talking sorry. about this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it. both of them. Yeah, both of them will be in bed before <laughs> the end of this. <laughs> so, okay, so in the eighties, I guess it was the eighties. Yeah. Um, I had clubs in Telford yeah. and uh, suddenly there appeared a guy and I am going to name him because it's all been proven so if you don't mind I am going to name the guy yeah. um, his name is Kenny Chan Kenny, Chinese Ch guy. Kenny Chan yeah oh. Chinese guy yeah uh, in the 80s yeah and he's teaching what he professed to be Wing Chun right and he was a Chinese guy so in those days well, you know, you turn up as a Chinese guy in a in a leisure centre teaching kung fu. Mm. That's it. You're yeah. the real deal. Okay. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what you know. Yeah, and I just I just wanted to see what he looked like. Okay, I just wanted to see what he did. Yeah. And and I I just wanted to go. One of my students went, and he was a white sash, right? Yeah. So he'd been a few. He'd done a few weeks training, and he took his white sash with us, mm. and he decided to go to see this guy. And he went into the club, and he's and the guy said. Oh, you're an expert. You don't need for you to train. No need for you to come here. And so he didn't want him to train, right? And we kind of, you know, what? the guy thought, well, what's what's wrong with him, you know? Okay. Anyway, I thought, well, I'd love to go and see what he does because obviously I'm teaching Kung Fu and, and I want to see what he does as far as Kung Fu. You always love to see the competition and you love to meet people and, and say hello and share share with people and so on. And, and, and often, of course, you can look at them and go, you know what? you know, shh, 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 nothing, okay? <laughs> but that doesn't mean to say you have to insult them. It doesn't mean to say that you have to do anything about it. Mm. I'm, you know, if you was to do that, you'd be forever, all your life, you know, talking about various people who have just, are just crap and trying to give, you know, there's always going to be good people. There's always going to be bad people. I accept that. But this Jack, this Jackie Chan, I was going to say, this, <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, you, you can't say later. that. You can't say that. <laughs> this is 2020. No. You can't say yeah. that. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Kenny, uh, yeah. in his wisdom, yeah. uh, we went to his hall. There was a there was a guy in a black sash standing outside, and we went up. And there was about three of us. Okay, I went yeah. with a a girl I was training with, and and another guy. Yeah. And the guy went up to him to this kid, and he says, "Oh, what's going on? You know, this guy, black sash, standing outside." He says, "Oh, oh, what are you doing? Can't we go in and have a look and whatever?" And he went, oh, no, no, he, he doesn't want, he says, I don't know what's wrong with him, he's useless. And then that was his black sash talking. Right? He says, oh, I don't know. And anyway, but the point is, if you imagine a church hall, yeah. okay, yeah. all the curtains closed, yeah. and to look through the hallway, to look into the hall, you couldn't see him because he was up one side wow. teaching people okay. yeah. to avoid any 
despite the people seeing him. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. the only place he couldn't do that was the racket centre in Telford. Okay. okay. Where you could actually look through because it was actually a a uh, squash court. Okay. So you'd yeah. see him doing his thing, and I got to see him do his thing anyway. Anyway, we were parked in the car park at one stage, wanted to go to see him. This was at the time I've just mentioned. Yeah. And he saw us. And he came over uh, to us and he says, I, you know, hello and all that kind of thing. And, you know, he was sweating and he was shaking and he was taking his watch off and putting it back on, taking his watch off, putting uh, it back on. He was thinking there's going to be a rush or something. Putting, yeah, I, I think so. And I, and, I, and I just says to him, I says, what's the matter? What's, what's wrong? Why do you don't want people to see? Oh, yeah, you're a master. You don't need to see this and all that kind of thing. And, and fair enough. Um, no, I wasn't a master, and I was a very naughty boy. And uh, it's, it's just that, anyway, he, he kind of went off. And then, of course, my friend, my, my student went over to the, the guy that was at the door and says, yeah. what's the matter with him? And, and anyway, to cut a long story short, he was selling everything from the uniform to the socks to the, you know, the, the trainers, you know, those yeah. Kung Fu shoes, yeah. everything. The first grade was black sash. And they trained with what? him for three months. They trained with him for three months, and then he went off yeah. and started another club. And all he did was turn up to take the money at each club. And this was in just one town, Telford, wow. in Shropshire. And he had 27 clubs in that town. Jesus right? Christ. And every single night, basically, these people would teach for him. He would yeah. go take the money, show a couple of moves, and then disappear right now all the time we got to see him eventually in yeah. the racket center because of the glass yeah. and we saw him kind of do the hokey cokey yeah. forwards and then backwards and then take the money and he was gone within 10 minutes of being in the class okay take the wow. subs and then he'd go right and he had even a 14 year old girl as a black sash teaching the class she hadn't got a clue okay everybody's there because you know the chinese guy master yeah. was was running that organization okay yeah, yeah. he ended up on a program with esther ranson yeah okay do you remember the program yeah, esther yeah, ranson? Ranson. yeah. yeah it was uh, so yeah. was it uh, god no silla was surprise surprise, surprise. No, was, no, uh, yeah, was, know, was, surprise surprise esther ranson yeah i know i know esther ranson surprise surprise that was silla i just i know it was <laughs> esther ranson did that sort of like Oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Yeah, well, yeah, basically, they were picking on the con men. They were catching yeah. all the con men and sticking it on film. What's wrong with just go, making a point of saying it? Okay. Yeah. So they went out, they put people, con men, and this guy ended up three months in prison for fraud. Okay. Jeez. And that was basically it. Now, the, the whole point is when you experience people like that, you're very wary when you go to clubs. You, you know, yeah. you are always friendly and you're always, well, you know, you, you, you love to see other martial arts and you know what i don't want to travel anymore i don't want to be seeing you know people i already i don't have to travel i can look on youtube you look on youtube you see people you know what their quality is now when they turn around i mean i do understand did you did you say you had something about integrity um did, uh, did, yeah i think so hang on um yeah so the yeah integrity right so i was meant to say i've got there was another part to this. There was another post that was written. Okay. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, go. <laughs> okay, so right. Okay, I'll, I'll read some selected stuff. Okay. Um, hmm. Integrity means that you are only as strong as your weakest point. You can have integrity in your character, your training system, and your club or association. It doesn't matter how good you are in other areas, your weakest point will be the thing that lets you down. Okay, integrity also means you don't have to be uh, one thing or another. You can be all of them if you understand an idea. You don't have to sell your soul in the martial arts to have a successful club or business. You only have to have integrity in your character, your training, your system, and your club structure. Okay, and and this 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 one I thought was interesting. Okay. You can fool all the people some of the time, but not all the time. If you leave it to others, to look after an area for you and don't oversee and manage it yourself. Don't be surprised when they let you down. If you don't care, they won't. Okay. Now, now, it's 
the problem is we don't know if it's about you okay in relation to uh, you know the person we did the reaction videos yeah. but it's interesting that these two posts come out around about the same time now <laughs> and it's it's also interesting that, that the point he made in his in his you know rant there about um you know letting just letting people get on with their own thing and don't be surprised if they let you down yeah, is yeah. probably the kind of thing that this person would would say you know that you would you did or he just he didn't care for me you know or he just let me get on with it so what would you say yeah. uh, well i did that? say what he's suggesting you know previously because you'd you did tell me about that you know yeah. in an earlier chat yeah and so i did give you that answer about you know suggest what is he suggesting you know if i give them you know an opportunity to make their own decisions and so on encourage yeah. them to do their own thing you know am i am i letting them down in doing that so yeah. but i i want to i want to do i want to chat about this this word integrity okay yeah because it seems to me that you know the gentleman might have a a slightly different take on integrity well, because yeah. i mean okay look if i had no integrity yeah. i'd build an association built on total bullshit ability if you like yeah. and zero genuine technical knowledge i'd charge an arm and a leg for it yeah and then i'd complain when people with compassion for enthusiasts who have the ability to see through the bullshit they're spread out if i comment on that bullshit yeah then 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 the, you know if there is any doubt in my assessment about that kind of bullshit and about that kind of individual who may well say uh, you know i have no integrity now i i want to i want to emphasize yeah that i have nothing against this individual no 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 only that he is totally is misguided if he is talking about me yeah. Okay, but, and I got no problem with people talking about me. That's why we're on a podcast. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but the the, the thing is, right, that if anyone's got any, you know, if he listens to two sides of the story as opposed to one, let's just let's just imagine that he's taken on a student that I've just, you know, got rid of. Yeah, and that student obviously will complain and give his own side of the story and no, really, oh yeah. they did this and they did the other and they did the other what that in that student wouldn't say is what he actually did to deserve what he got yeah. okay yeah. now i can i can gladly but i'm not going to put it on a podcast i'm not going to you know sort of put my dirty washing out i'm just simply stating a fact about this kind of individual that does yeah. martial arts but if he wants to if he is interested in in this and he has and it's actually me he's talking about then absolutely give me a call you know just contact me maybe send an email and say okay so what happened to make you you know this this guy well apart from the fact that i know that he's destroying my martial arts mm. that he's taking apart my kung fu style when he isn't qualified to do it that's the one thing but the other thing is he did a lot of things that were personal damage to me yeah so you know if anybody had any integrity in martial arts okay yeah. basically they would not necessarily support a fellow tutor or a fellow teacher or coach or whatever you want to call it but they would at least inquire as to why their voice in their anger mm -hmm. being betrayed by a student yes yeah, sure. yeah. okay that'd be a good example of integrity yeah but i guess taking another course fee is more important than building a well, unity yeah. of martial I mean, arts there is that you know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. but you can't begrudge people from wanting to you know get 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 food on the plate you know but i uh, know i absolutely i do not disagree with anyone trying to make money yeah. what i do not like you know for a decent product Absolutely. now if i if That's if i had a point. plumber yeah. if i had a plumber and he came to my house and he said he was the bee's knees in plumbing and he could do the best job and i let him play with my gas right <laughs> and then yeah. i had an explosion you know i'd want to know why yeah. but i'd also want to question his qualifications <laughs> and, and when you turn around you say yeah but i'm a great plumber uh, and it doesn't matter what other people think I'm a great plumber. I learned it from Bob down the road, yeah. and he says he was a great plumber. Mm. So that makes me a great plumber. Unfortunately, mm. it's what comes out, 
you know, mm -hmm. what's at face value, what you see on YouTube yeah. and what you see. And you see, now I don't care how good an individual is like that, how good he thinks he is. What I care about is how he can make those students good or make them believe something that just isn't true. Now, when yeah. you watch someone doing martial arts and you, you either know they're going to be really good and they've got a good basis. Now, I don't mean beginners or anything like that. I'm talking instructors. I'm talking people who are teaching courses. I'm talking about people I see on YouTube that are teaching people that come from other martial arts and then try to convince them that they should be doing this with a, like, I mean, I watched uh, one and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to associate it with anybody. I'm just going to, you know, maybe other people might associate it if they took at the look at these YouTube videos. Yeah. Uh, I saw this, and the same guy that I've been dissing was at this course. Okay, yeah. my my student. Yeah. I have to emphasize that. I I I hate having to say it, but he was my student. Yeah. Okay. So I know how much kung fu he knows. Yeah. And and so I watch him doing a, a course with a stick yeah. and I see what he's trying to do with his stick and I know damn well that it has absolutely logical, no logical sense, no scientific uh, application in any shape or form. And then worse than that, they then try to interpret it into using a spear, a spear for God's sake. <laughs> And it, yeah, it's yeah, it's like yeah. one of the best weapons yeah. and you can't even roll it you yeah. can't even roll it and and i watch a, a teacher showing someone and the student is holding the spear in a better position and a better way than the actual instructor yeah. now i don't begrudge that instructor i'm not trying to you know diss everybody all i'm trying to say is look I am so sad that that instructor has never had the opportunity to actually see what genuine martial arts, how, how they actually could be training that weapon, yeah. how they possibly could understand the logic to that weapon. Mm -hmm. But when they did those things, and I don't care whether you say that you're teaching, oh yeah, but it's teaching beginners or it's, or you're teaching, you know, senior people, it doesn't matter if the technique's useless and it has no quality. I mean, the, the, basically they're putting a stick on top of the other guy's stick and the other guy's hand was in the middle of their two hands yeah, yeah, yeah. holding his stick now any logical individual would have a stick at a long range mm. and would use the end to smack that guy's fingers then they lose the stick it's, mm. it's as simple as that yeah but so but, what, what, they have, but, but it's the way they do things but that's perhaps the way they do things that's what people will say uh-huh they will say that and all I'm going to say is that's not the way science does things. Yeah. Um, OK, um, I do understand that a lot of people have faith in various religions. Well, you could, okay. we could argue the same thing about you and me. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have faith, but we have proof. OK, we have logical assumptions that can be backed up by evidence. OK, now I'm yet to find anyone in any faith-based interest and i'm not just talking about religion yeah. who has a scientific backed base for their assumptions now when you watch youtube and you see these things the first thing i do is i look at the logical base to what they're assuming they're doing right. and when i cannot see it i openly invite people like that to explain what they're doing mm -hmm. because if you can explain it to me then i will shut up and and god i will yeah, pay for all do, your students do you think, to train with you but here's a point for you do you think because you are you are biased so am i but do you think Absolutely. that bias caught clouds are sort of um uh you know when we read things we think well obviously you know they're wrong they're wrong you know maybe we're not in full possession of the facts mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but do you see what i'm saying you know yeah what, yeah what do you think mm. i absolutely agree with you of course we're biased am i going to look at things in one perspective and say no that's wrong but when you can back that up with a physical knowledge a physical means mm. of providing a, a tactical technical you know strategic um outcome yeah. if you like to against a specific you know stimulus or stimuli yeah. whatever yeah. 
right? When you see a motion like that and you say, wait a minute, if you do that, this is what's going to happen. It's, it's pretty plain to most people that these things are just fabricated out of assumptions. They're not proven knowledge. And, and yes, of course, they're right. They can train any martial art or any movement they like. I used to run around the park in bare feet, as you already know. Yeah, yeah. I used to throw a stick around, blow in a whistle. That was my martial art when I was 13 years old. Okay. Yeah. But I didn't teach it to people. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. You've said, and yeah, that's you've said my that point. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't teach it to people. Yeah. So if people say they talk about integrity and they talk about, you know, knowledge in martial arts and now we can share it. Yeah. Well, show me what you got to share. You've got nothing to share, so stop giving bullshit to people, to gullible people who really believe in you. And if you're going to, you know, show people genuine martial arts, show them something that works. Don't show bullshit on a, on a bloody video, and tr and the other people who have no idea what you're doing will go, oh, you know. That must, he must be great and you know because you've built a reputation yeah. but, then you, yeah. you suddenly drag people into that reputation yeah. and, but, and but, it strengthens your reputation yeah. it doesn't it doesn't strengthen your reputation it strengthens your pocket but it doesn't strengthen your reputation yeah but do you not do you think that people like that will then you know hide behind words and phrases like, you know, integrity and, you know, peace and love and wisdom and meditation. And, and they'll really sort of push this esoteric side of, you know, every unity and all the rest of it. Now, that's fine. But at the same time, if you're, um, you know, if you're selling something and, and quite frankly, you know, we would say it's an inferior product, but that's what we would say. I'm sure the people, you know, training it think it's great. But whatever. But when you when you hide behind words like that, you know what 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 kind of person is that integrity? You know, playing off people's perceptions of martial arts. Is it, you know, is it? Harking back <laughs> to bloody David Carradine, at the yeah. Shaolin Temple. You know, trying to get that same vibe. I mean, you know, I don't know. Well, no one's ever going to make um, I don't know martial arts kind of uh, united. Because the, there's too many, there's too much of this now. People just want martial arts to survive, you know. Yeah. But the very, the very problem we've got right now uh, with traditional martial arts, particularly, obviously, we're talking kung fu, yeah. is individuals that profess to teach it, profess to come out with, you know, all sorts of alleged wisdom, and then are caught out because of their stupid ideology about putting out you know demo videos and on YouTube that you can actually see straight through right. you can see the technical ability of them and and okay I've got no problem with that if they can talk sense right I've got no problem with that at all yeah. and I and I'm doing my best here right to protect the people that talk like this I'm not dissing them I'm simply saying I'm giving them my opinion Okay, now I can't talk to them direct because they don't want to talk direct. Yeah. They just want to come out with, you know, bullshit about integrity. Um, but the the problem is, really, I gotta say that, right? Mm. They them mm. they'd rather enjoy the riches provided by misguided enthusiasts, if you like, yeah. than learn from the long knowledge, I should say of those um, who at least can offer a logical technical argument. Um, yeah. They fail to prosper, you know, they f fail and prosper from the ignorance of others. Instead, they pretend to promote peace and unity so their ability will not be questioned, if yeah. you like. Yeah. Yeah, they I, just I don't want to be questioned. Yeah. yeah, they can claim to be victims of bullying, of course, as, as we've seen. And uh, they politicize, if you like, their the bull to further their dubious reputation. Now, I'm not talking about any one individual. I haven't named anyone. All I'm going by is you've told me 
that someone has written something about integrity and I don't want to know who they are. I don't care because there's so many of them out there. But, you know, I'd know if they send them to me. You know, I never want to get involved in... Uh, I don't want any bullshit, you know, arguments back. I mean, if people want to argue, they can. And I'll just give them my honest answer. But I'm not going to, you know, take to trolling. I'm not going to write to them. I'm not going to write to any kind of um, an organization and, and call it out. Okay. I'm just simply saying, look, in general, this is the problem martial arts have got. Now, on the good side, we, there are people that are trying to change that. There are people that are making a difference in martial arts and trying to bring the reputation of Kung Fu. Thanks to people like that, Kung Fu is is literally dying on its feet yeah. because all these fighting styles the all the modern kind of self-defense organizations you know professing to rebuild or reinvent kung fu or reinvent martial arts in general and then you've got the you know martial arts the mma and you've got the um whatever kfc <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Oh, yeah, KFC. the UFC. Do you remember those so days? On. I know. Do you remember I, those oh days? yeah. Oh. When you could go down KFC, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's health food for you. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, you've got all these people, and they are rightly and absolutely correctly looking at kung fu and going, "It's crap." But the problem is, they only see the crap and the people that are calling themselves so-called mm. traditionalists without any kind of fighting ability at all they cannot i mean how many times do you see people who do a martial arts example on a youtube site and the guy punches them and then leaves his arm there for five minutes while the guy does all sorts of stuff to him all the time all the yeah, time yeah all, um, all the time i that's thought it what, was only like 1970s but no, it's no, not it real it's it's not real and yeah. i've just watched a video of the same guy i was talking about that i that, you know my student uh, ex student mm. now apparently he's doing a course. I don't know how much money he's paying for. You know what? It doesn't matter how much money you pay for a course, and it doesn't matter how much money you make from a course, it doesn't make you any good. Okay, I think that ought to be said to people like that because yeah. you're spending this money, and I love watching this stuff on YouTube. Now, I just saw this like. I don't know what it was. I think it was Opti Dumpty or something attacking him. <laughs> no, no, no. He was dressed up in one of them massive padded suits. Yeah. You know, like a Cyberman from Doctor Who. And he still managed to punch. <laughs> he still managed to punch the guy about five times in his face yeah. before the guy reacted to try to get him down. Yeah. Okay. And then when he got him down, of course, he loved punching this big foam thing. Yeah. yeah but yeah. of course, this big foam <laughs> thing was holding the guy down. Yeah, it just, no, there's nothing what, you can do about That's it. what people are selling. That's modern, that's selling, that's selling yeah. um, pressure testing of your yeah. style. Because, yeah, so you know, all this bullshit, 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 we'll pressure test and, and we'll make it real. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll put on a massive foam helmet, which is twice the size of my body weight. weight yeah. And, uh, you know, when we we'll wrestle, yeah. but Jesus Christ, but, you know, whatever you know but but the point guess... is like you've always said right whenever we've done like say knife defense courses and stuff like that you won't learn anything unless yep. you know and that was your sort of yep. that was your opening gambit you know it's like yep. you, you know and you it's learn true. nothing unless and you practice so if 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 i've just paid you know 500 quid for a for a course and you said that's the first thing that like, i'll be like what <laughs> I'd be really let down, Steve. I would really be let down. Well, but, uh, people pay for long courses of driving instruction, still fail their test, you know. Yeah. And yeah. and basically, it's down to how much practice you're getting yeah. between. And it's the same with martial arts. People go to a class once a week and expect to become a black belt with a great skill of fighting. Mm. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. Get a life. Mm. If you want to train martial arts, you've got to get out and you've got to train martial arts. If you want to be a good runner. You don't just go to the track every Sunday and do a race. Yeah. You actually get out and road run every day and plus your diet and plus everything else you need to do. It's it's the same yeah. as every other sport or activity. But the trouble with martial arts is people hide behind the, the nostalgia well, yeah, and, the, like, uh, and the, 
yeah and all the mysticism and so yeah. on and people have been able to build businesses on mysticism yeah. i mean christ you only have to look at reiki for that <laughs> Reiki. I'm a master Reiki? at Reiki. No, Reiki. Uh, it's well, Reiki, whatever it? it's... Well, whatever. <laughs> he was the first officer on the USS Enterprise when he writes it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am no, a you're... master at re 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 Reiki or Reiki. whatever it is. Yeah, 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 and, it. Uh, yeah and I can apparently heal people without touching them. Um, and That's so brilliant. on. That's yeah. I, 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 yeah, I went to a course and I watched... I was embarrassed. <laughs> it's a it's a cult like you, any of these you took the so. certificate though uh, oh yeah i got that no they actually posted me the certificate and and bless them they posted me a a piece of uh crystal that i left on the shelf because i thought well what do i want that for they give it me and they said oh because <laughs> you know with the white robes and all that yeah. and i'm thinking what the is going on here oh. and uh i only went because it said meditation on, on the yeah. on the advert yeah. I wanted to learn a little bit of meditation. I went there, Jesus Christ. I, it's, it was embarrassing. I don't even want to talk about it. It was embarrassing yeah, what they did. But uh, nevertheless, I became a master of Reiki in the weekend and um, <laughs> paid 80 quid for the privilege. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. So, hey, and, um, they were, uh, don't get me wrong, they were lovely people, yeah. but they, people, I want to be a tree. And, mm. and you know, people believe in that. And, and, and that's great if you want to believe in that. But don't, tell everybody else yeah you know yeah. I, the worst thing a religious person could do is try to plug their religion all you do is make people anti-religious yeah but aren't we you doing know. the same though can't you just make the argument that you're you know a yeah. religious fanatic and plug but in kung fu you know which people well, will say and we i acknowledge yeah that. yeah absolutely absolutely and i i yes and i acknowledge but it too but the from, difference is yeah. right Go is on. logic and proof okay that's it that's it you right. know so but but like i said before we we are i mean trying to draw away from this kind of conversation about someone writing letters and their facebook and all this kind of thing uh, yeah that's that's great carry on but but don't complain and people who turn around and say people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones not everybody lives in a glass house my friend mm. not everybody comes you're, from you're, a glass house are you like in a fortified bunker like you know I, Pretty a mile much. underneath the earth's crust or something yeah because the, the end of the day there's no you know you can and and most definitely you can question my ability and mm. you can question my integrity by all means but first show me yours well it's yeah. not me that needs to care yeah but 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 you know right when you've got right list do me a favor list yeah. your martial art qualifications okay just list them right now What's your martial uh, art qualifications? Formal qualifications. Um, well, uh, black sash. Yeah. Uh, uh, my fifth degree. Yeah. I took my fifth degree twenty-five years ago. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So what else? And kickboxing, black belt, right. referee. I don't know. What else have I done? Can you remember? Uh, <laughs> GY shoe. Is it GY shoe? Yeah, the GY shoe instructor. Yeah, the self defense but, instructor. But, but, but hang on, that these are all these are all Lao centric, all right? So, the, so yeah, your black yeah. belt, your black sash was Lao Gar. Your oh, yeah, black yeah, belt yeah. in kickboxing was La Lao Gar. Gar. Yeah, and yeah. then you 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 think okay, so we can pretty much let's just combine it. You are a fifth degree black sash in Lao Gar, right? Yeah, That's it. Yeah. Now. Yep. Compared to a lot of other people, when they list their credentials, you know, yeah. eighth dan at this, you know, third dan at jodo, first dan at jujitsu. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know? Don't know what jodo is. Go on. It's, it's that, a stick, it's isn't it? It's a stick. It's that Joe stick. You know, anyway, but do you Joe know what stick. I mean? When, when, and then wait when a minute, people... wait a minute. Hang on, hang on. Hold no, the, name's not hold, Joe the stick. hold the, yeah, hold the, hold the bloody fort. Fort, yeah. Well, so wait a minute. You do. Uh, I, I know this from karate. I understand from karate that karate people will do karate. Okay, whatever style it is, they do karate. Yeah. But then, when they want to learn a stick, they now do the stick, no, and no, that's no. and that's a separate black belt, yes. is it? Yes, yes, a separate. And then, black if belt. they don't want to do something else, that's another separate black no, no, belt. No, the best one is if they want to learn the sword, they have to do uh, kendo. But in order to draw the sword, they have to do aido. So you have to be a <laughs> no it's true it's true you have to be a black like... belt at all those yes yes so basically you're a, so basically you're a black belt karate right yeah 
and that's it. <laughs> but you can call yourself a black belt at Aido, black belt at Kendo, black belt at J- J- what's his name? J- Jodo. <laughs> Jodo. <laughs> and you and you but basically you're a black belt, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then that depends totally on the quality of your karate. Yeah. Because everything else just follows from that, yeah, doesn't but, but it? My point was that you look at people with all these credentials, right? And then and they and they can control people's um perception, right? Because yeah. they've got these lists and lists and lists yeah. and lists. So well, I hope at your people... credentials. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, we don't know oh, nothing. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, no, okay. yeah. do you understand? I, I do, I know nothing, I know nothing, but ask me a question exactly. and I'll give you an answer. Yeah. yeah. But I'll give you an answer that's logical and you don't have to go, oh yeah, and then go away and think about it. You can go away and actually learn it. And not only that, you can go away and use it. So depending, of course, on how much you train. So the, the issue is, it's, it's right. And in the time that I developed as well, in the time that I was training, many times, and this is you know bringing us to, you know, we're going to have a really good guest. Uh, and I, I love him to death. I think he's a really good uh, martial artist. And the, the, the point that I'm making is he is now turning the tables on the people that are dissing Kung Fu, but he's doing it solely, you know, from his own perspective. He's going out there and putting himself at risk and training everything to prove how Kung Fu is working against these things. Right. Okay, and, and so when you have someone like that, you can really respect how much martial arts can, you know, be, how good it can be. Okay, but yeah. he's not hiding behind his style. He's, he's not, none of us are hiding behind us. Our style is there okay for the world to see and and our answers are there for the world to hear if mm-hmm. they want to hear them the the problem you've got is when people are coming out with videos and this is my biggest thing right yeah are they coming out with videos and of course yes they're saying they're this grade they're that grade and the other grade the problem is the videos show them for who they are that's the first thing but the second thing is when someone goes out and says i've done this i've done that done the other they've done nothing because they've never learned the whole of one thing and if they have they should be dead by now because that's so long it will take them to learn one good genuine style okay so how do you know you've learned the whole and how i haven't learned no i'm not saying you have but let me put forward let me play devil's advocate how do you know you've learned the whole how do you know what what you do is so good because it works, James, and because I I've got students oh, we've, like we've, you we've, that can prove it. Yeah, well, we've had this conversation before, but I've got to put the question forward because it sounds really yeah. sort of, uh, what's the word, conceded? For the yeah, uninitiated. Conceded. And, yeah. and, 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 like, people, that I think the biggest mis- problem with people's, um, they, the way they perceive you is that you are just pro kung fu you know. No, I don't think you are pro kung fu. No, I think no, I'm you not, are I'm pro martial logic. Arts. And martial yeah. arts. And yeah, I am pro martial arts. Style, yeah. Regardless of what style, regardless of what style, it's got to make. It doesn't sense. matter what style it is. If it's yeah. good, I yeah. love it. I I like to see it. Yeah. And and, you know, that's something that's you know been proved to me. And and as you know, I, I have recently asked you if you were happy to train with the, the guy that I, you know, have invited as a guest because I I don't want to see. I don't want to be the person, individual that says, oh yeah, I am the greatest. You have to follow me. Yeah. You know, the, the meek will, <laughs> that's, that's a funny thing. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> these, these cool. martial artists who they're going, yeah. And the, you know, all about this, pa- this, this passion about martial arts and the, yeah. you know, peace in martial arts and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And they're the kind of people that will turn around and say, you know, the meek shall inherit the earth. Uh... If that's okay with you people. <laughs> Well, yeah. It, yeah, exactly. You know, I'm. Uh, uh, yeah, and Jesus says the meek will inherit the earth. What yeah, is if a that's question? Okay with well, you people? Mm. <laughs> I just love it. Uh, sorry, no, not this in religion at no, all. No, no, no. You, it's you up know, to you. you. It's not like you haven't been known to, but <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, yeah, but we won't go there. Hey, right for now, for now. Um, let let me ask you a question about um, what what do you think? right drives people to be instructors what do you think is the underlying reason well in general it should be i can 
I can, yeah, I can tell you what it should be. It should be a passion to teach, okay? A, a passion to want people to see what you, you know, what you have learned and what you can understand and what you uh, accept is, you know, bona fide. And this is where the problem is. Everybody thinks that, right? Everybody thinks their style's the greatest. Mm, and yeah. the, the trouble is, is, you know, when you when you're seen to be mistaken by that time it's too late you can't change people yeah they're going to turn around and say oh no 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 you're just being a bully or you're just doing this or you're just doing that and it doesn't matter how much technical information you can give them it doesn't make any difference to them they'll go they'll listen to you all politely a lot of the time i've been to martial arts clubs uh there are nothing to do with me i've been to them in canada as well and i sit there and watch they're very nice to let you watch and you know they they don't realize um, you know they're open and they're they're friendly and they're just doing their thing and mm. I got no problem with that. But then my problem is, I go to them then and say, well, why did you do that? Why did you do this? And how does that work? And so on. And I have a great discussion with them, and I can prove to them how you know unrealistic a technique might be, and they'll love it. And you know what? They'll carry on doing it. Right. They'll just continue to do the same thing. You know why? Well, it's because perfect. it's their kingdom, well, and it. you know, you know, they, you know what they say about houses. You know, um, you know, man's house is his castle, kind of thing. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and, and that's it, it's a, yeah. a man's dojo, is his, <laughs> is his. You know, the ma he's the master of that dojo, and no. that's that. Hey, that's another thing. If you yeah. profess to teach kung fu and call what your training area a dojo, alarm bell should yeah. be ringing. But well, anyway. you know, I'm not talking dojo. I'm talking any. I didn't mention I know, kung I know, fu. I know. I'm it's kidding. a kroon. It's okay. a kroon. It's a kroon. Well, if you like, it doesn't matter what but. it's frigging called, does it? No, it um, doesn't. Um, I think you know. Once people have attained, once people are happy they feel safe in, in in their in their the way they're perceived by other people they don't want anything to yes. ruffle their feathers you know they can't be seen to 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 uh be acknowledge wrong. their own ignorance and yes. I, I use the word ignorance because if you're it, it, not if you're not trying to find a, a reason why uh, you know uh, why you do something why it works etc and you're just teaching people willy-nilly with no consideration to what you're teaching or no serious thought, then that is ignorance. Because you, James, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Go on. I was gonna say, what's that, what's that story about the king's clothes? Oh, well, you know, uh, I, 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 perhaps I should know, but I don't, it, it just <laughs> eludes me sorry. right now. Is it, where, the, you, where the, sorry, the guy goes and sort of says, you know this is so invisible thread and it's so good and everything and of course the king comes out in his the king's you know new clothes and he's naked mm -hmm. because he truly believes that he's wearing the best suit because he's convinced he's been convinced <laughs> by this that's great con yeah. Man, yeah 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 that he's he's wearing the best clothes with the best silk but it's so fine it's invisible mm -hmm. and so he just he wears this suit out in actual fact it's it's he's naked and uh he doesn't realize he's not it even until got he walks a, he's not even got yeah. a pair of jocks he ain't on. got a stitch no he hasn't got a stitch on and he walks out and uh, uh of course to the dismay of his court who look at him and of course they don't laugh so they just kind of pretend yeah that you know it's great he says oh look at my new clothes and of course they're all going oh yeah 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 you know yeah Bit like Donald Trump slot really isn't oh, it <laughs> Stop. don't go on about Pollard no I won't have yeah it. sorry have it. no okay so yeah but basically that's a, that's simply a story mm. told yeah. about ignorance and about how you can be completely yeah. and utterly you know the, the wall pulled over your eyes as they say and and a lot of the time that's the problem with martial arts well and they will yeah. take it on board yeah. and they will oh yeah that's fantastic style oh look what he can do he can do this kick and that oh we can do the splits look at him and then uh, i want to do that i want to do that and i can't exactly be as good as him but i'm going to do things like him and mm. i'm going to be his student and and of course it, it just they live in their own little 
as you say, a little house well, that is, you know, can well, be blown well, over. I've said it before on the podcast, but I always like, you know, there's not much I like about Bruce Lee, but, <laughs> <laughs> but when he quoted uh, in the sanctity of the unknown under such a veil men honor you as masters that really resonates with me because yeah. but 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 our thing my thing is i've never had to say to you prove it you've willingly told me the the problem with everything you've ever taught me you've suggested a reason why and suggested a reason why it doesn't work You've told me the weakness in the argument. You've told me the strength in the argument. So you, but you, but you've said before about like you know you don't wear sort of you know armor that you know shields. You you want the chinks in it. You want people yeah. to question you, to prove you wrong. That's your thing, because yeah, you're not you right. need to be proved. Yeah, because you need to be. Why? What, what oh, is God. science, James? Look at the difference between, and I don't mean to disreligion. I'm not disreligion. I'm talking about religion. I'm using the two as a, as an yeah. e, an example. Look at the the difference between religion and science. Religion insists or it knows the answers. Science says prove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the difference, right? So when uh, religious people talk about okay well science is just a theory mm. they don't understand the term theory they don't realize that theory means the best assumption of logic and uh, an argument and facts that we can best find like it's the theory of gravity mm. now we could come up with another idea eventually but until then prove it yeah you yeah. come up with it and we'll change the whole concept of gravity if you can disprove gravity or if you can disprove that the earth is round or if you can disprove that the solar system goes around the sun or whatever prove it and we will and you'll win the nobel prize and you'll be the best you know the most famous and the richest person on earth yeah. right if you can prove it so don't preach faith, just state facts. Yeah. And all I'm doing is stating the facts that I understand to be true by the logical application of each scientific principle. And, and that's it. Now, you can prove some of those wrong because I'm not the brightest thing, in, you know, the thickest tree on the <laughs> plot. But honestly... If you want to, I'll listen because I really do want to know. And I have great conversations with people on, you know, on Messenger, different martial arts people, good martial arts people. And, and we, we disagree about things and mm. we make the point. And I just simply say, that doesn't make sense. This is what the reason for that. And, and they will understand that. And if I can't prove it, they can prove to me oh right okay yeah i can see that that's how that would work yeah that's absolutely that's the best way because that's what keeps science that's what keeps martial arts alive yeah now, you yeah. start taking out that out and just say this works for me throw that away i'm sorry so it's not going to happen it's a, another question for you do you yeah. based on that do you do you believe in um style segregation or should sort of everybody really want to train together you know what do you what do you think i think if the, the problem is is everybody wants to be the boss yeah right everybody wants to be the master and it's nothing to do with martial arts it's to do with human nature okay mm. so a one way you want to keep people separate and it doesn't matter if you've got like 10 top instructors and there's just one master and then in another organization you've got another 10 top instructors and a single master mm. all those top instructors could want to train together right they might want to share ideas and so on but you know what how are you going to do that with two masters right two yeah. masters so they're going to turn around and they're going to say you know you're better than him you're better than him they're going to separate you all so you can't comply together so you can't conspire to become you know united with the other master yeah okay so they say you know they separate you by making you all masters yeah that's how they do it and that's human nature it's as simple as that so 
that's how people work martial arts too. They uh, make themselves masters. Taekwondo, and then I'm they, saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they make themselves masters <laughs> and then they they raise people, they give people black belts yeah. and they give people qualification. Have I ever given you a black belt, James? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you have not given me a black belt. No, damn because it. <laughs> when you're ready to, you and you know what? what? You don't want one. And you know why you don't want one? You want to prove that you earn it. And of course, I already know you've proven many times that you can earn it and that you could have one at any point in time you wanted. But at some point, you just never worried about it. And, and that just gives people the idea, the, the understanding that it isn't about getting a bloody black belt. And that's why I never took a grade. I haven't took a grade for 25 years. <laughs> what do I want to pay a load of money to do my own set for? <laughs> yeah, but, Make my but, own setup. <laughs> But, 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 you acknowledge there is a place for gradings. Of course there's right. a place for gradings mm. because you have to have a curriculum yeah. whereby up to a certain point you have to judge people for what they are training and how they, what kind of quality they're training to. And those, those grades are of value, mm -hmm. a great oh, yeah. value. Okay? Understood. But there is a point when you get you no longer value certificates and you no longer value belts and you start valuing what you've done to earn them. Mm. Okay, and that is the important thing. But on the whole, of course, everyone deserves recognition. Oh, yeah. And that belt around their waist, that is one way that they get recognition. Yeah. And that doesn't matter whether they can fight, it doesn't matter whether they understand, they've just got to comply to a standard that is required for that particularly uh, that I get uh, st that stone in the wall, if you mm -hmm. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. absolutely. And once they've done that, they can then eventually develop, uh, and of course, go up the go up the grades, and then. But finally, the, the, eventually, there's not going to be. You get to a point where you no longer need to recognise those grades, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, higher grades. And so, because the problem you've got is, of course, people go, yeah, take this grade, take that grade. Oh, Christ, I've got to start something else now. I've got to invent something else so yeah. that they, I can, you know, make them take another grade, invent something else, make them take oh, another yeah. grade. So you've yeah. got, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, well, tenth, fifteenth yeah. degree. Well, what what, what yeah. are you learning by the time you're fifteenth degree? Well, what are you see. learning? Well, then the way, the way the Taekwondo do it, you know, because I love Taekwondo. The way they do it is you, you'll go up to like, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth down, and then they'll decide, oh, I'll tell you what, he's, he's now a master, we'll, we'll make him a grandmaster. And then, then they'll, you know, so start, they'll do another series of gradings, you know, and certificates mm. based on you being a grandmaster now. It's incredible. Yeah. It's really. Uh, it's is. not. It's not just Taekwondo. To be no, fair, it's I'm, a I'm lot, no, of, I, lot I, of people develop that. I will really just taekwondo like using the name that way. I, don't I do. You? Taekwondo. Yeah. Do. Yeah. Anyway, you know, <laughs> forgive me, but, but I will acknowledge there are some very good Taekwondo fighters, extremely good and capable fighters. Yeah. But I have yet yeah. to see a good Taekwondo technician. Now I'm sure at, at one point in the history of that style there was good technicians but i'm sorry i have yet to see a good technician not a fighter technician well, well i meet a lot of people in in kung fu styles that that you know they come out with these big photographs of old chinese gentlemen mm. on their wall mm. and say this is master such and such a thing and we learn yeah. all this from him and then he comes over occasionally and does courses <laughs> and then you watch what they're doing mm. and you think what the have you been shown and it and it isn't necessarily that that master was any was poor it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it just means that they're not getting taught mm. okay and mm. the problem then is of course they start making it up and of course the the, the guy back in china is going to say right you know i can't keep going over there i'm going to make you the head and you're going to do this and you're going to control that and of course then this guy starts getting power hungry and, and other people around him who are jealous who didn't get chosen they get power hungry guess what happens then the style splits and then you've got the master is devoted you know mm. by you know he is he's respected by so many different split groups but they all claim him to be their master but of course you know by the time that happens he's probably long gone 
and uh, you know, but everyone say, "Oh yeah, but he was our master." Look, and this is what our style's called, and yeah. and they they claim styles and they change the names of the styles occasionally, but they keep the same, you know, lineage if you want, mm -hmm. which no one can prove uh, yeah. most of the time unless you you know really get down to it, and it's so hard to prove. All that is in the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the eating. So all you got to do is put a video on YouTube and people can see how good you are. Don't profess to be good unless you have the answers to, you know, the questions that people will ask. OK, and, yeah. and that's that. So, you know, and if you haven't got the answers, then you're learning from someone. Yeah. But if you don't want to learn from someone and you used to stay in that you know cocoon mm. don't complain when people say you know that doesn't look right don't complain about it what's the point in complaining about it? Mm. you know you got your little co cocoon enjoy it you're making your money enjoy it mm. okay are you worried that your reputation will be harmed no one's harming your reputation only yourself yeah. you are harming you know you're harming your own reputation by not being capable of the things you profess to be capable of. Yeah. You're not being capable of teaching the logic in in the techniques you're trying to show other people and telling them they're logical yeah. when they're not logical or they're not of any technical value. So stop complaining about other people who want to protect the students, who want to save the martial arts from people that do that when you're one of them. Yeah. Because if you're one of them, you're in another camp. Just enjoy your money while you can. But every, what goes around comes around. Yeah. And eventually people will find out what you are. Yeah. And, they'll, and it'll go and it'll change. But you know what? The worst thing is people will follow you when you disappear, when you're off the face of the earth. They follow the same stupid idea and they make fools of themselves too. Yeah. And they get questioned too. And it always will happen and there never will be any unity ever. No. What I'd like to see is unity of one style for once. Uh, yeah, right. I'm with you. Absolutely. For once, which, uh, which is what we're about, which is what we're about. Now, we can go on and on and on, but I fear we have some technical stuff that people would love. You think someone's going to listen to our technical stuff after all that crap? Yeah, of course <laughs> they are. Of course they are. You know, they're there. Listen, we got to we got to move on. Now that was very good. So, excellent. So again, we switched off bitch mode, disengaged, and okay, bitch mode, disengaged. <laughs> <laughs> right now, we're going to talk about in a bit. Uh, kick blocks one and two, right? But before we do that, I just like a very bit of a bit of a, a conversation bit of a conflab about the use of elbows and knees in martial arts because this is a kind of this is a this is a good one because I can't tell you the amount of people who've come to a class right and uh, we're, we're punching pads or whatever and they say oh do you do elbows I said yeah yeah we do elbows <laughs> do you do knees yeah I say well can we do them I said well can you punch well yeah I can punch and they can't punch so like mm. but their mind is like elbows knees elbows knees why why do you think people are like that so can we talk about elbows and knees and the percep people's perception of them uh, in relation to using the techniques and uh, you know what we should be uh, looking for when we do them and you know go for it what do you reckon yeah well knees are fairly heavy and hefty but slow so consequently when I've... people throw a knee Mm. Go on. I've watched on back, and it, let's face it, you know, he's Shut not up. slow. He comes from the other yeah. village, and he, he lands does. a knee on someone's nose. It's great. From <laughs> from about 20 feet away, yeah. <laughs> and, you, and, and you beg to differ, why the hell didn't he just kick? <laughs> Did have got there earlier? So, yeah, the, the, yeah, we see films like that, and of course, people, they love it. And mm. But, I mean, elbows are very useful if you can get in close, or if you find yourself in close, and the simple reason is they can protect you at the same time as striking. Not only that, there's very little that you're gonna break. So they're far more in, in effect at close range, they're safer to use in a fist because you're gonna just break your knuckle. I mean, the amount of boxers maybe have fights outside yeah. of the ring without their hands all strapped up, end up with broken fingers yeah. is just phenomenal. 
Okay, and that's if they well, get into a scuffle it's, it's outside. It's not just boxers; it's anybody on a Saturday night. A anybody, you know, anybody. The emergency. Yeah. No, but I'm talking about people who are genuinely okay. used to yeah. punching, right, okay. and they they throw out powerful punches. Yeah. But as soon as you take those that protection off your hands, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. And so, of course, in normal situation where you've not trained a fisted to that degree, you're safer using open hands. You're safer using you know even fingers to a degree depending on the target mm. but you're most definitely safe using elbows when it comes to the knees you can throw the knees sideways into like into a uh, a thigh like a dead leg mm. and you can bring the knee up but it's it's much easier and more powerful if you're actually bringing the head down or the body down you know or back in well, fact down yeah. to that me. When what what you see a lot of people sort of you see them doing these sort of uh, these these forward knee strikes. Okay, so they're they're yeah. they're effectively as if they're kicking a target in front of them, but they're pushing their knee out. Yeah. In in the, now, I would um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I would suggest the only way you can really generate a bit of power in in a forward knee strike would be. To, to to move your entire body weight with that knee. Yeah, to jump it in. To, yeah, right. To jump it in. Now, if you yeah, look at to an jump upward, it in, yeah. if you look at an upward knee strike, because you know your yeah. your hips, you know your your leg can can travel up. So when you raise your yeah. knee up, as if that's you are more pushing. An, yeah, yeah, that's more anatomically sound. It's more but, anatomically sound. That's what I want yeah. to get at. Yeah, so basically if you're bringing the body down to it as well, yeah. that will increase the amount of energy you can provide to the target. Yeah. So um, a good example, because you know how many people say, do you do knees? You're right. People go around in, in Kung Fu going, Kung Fu doesn't do knees. Kung mm -hmm. Fu don't do elbows. Yeah. And then all you got to look at is even the most basic hand blocks and kick blocks. Look at number 10 kick block. Well, how does it end? Yep. A knee to the back, yep. a knee to the spine, yep. and most people they try to push out the knee towards the target, yeah. So yep. they're holding the guy's shoulders, and then they push the knee out towards the person, the target, yes, which yes. is the base of his spine. And the way I teach it, and uh, you know, because people will always write in and go, "Why the hell do you teach it like that?" Okay, you've got the guy round, you've got your hands on his shoulders. What the hell are you doing with them? Pull yep. him over the knee. When you pull him over the knee backwards, A, he's arched backwards, so he can't really fight back. Mm. B, the knee is coming directly up towards the spine, and the spine is going directly down towards the knee. Yeah. So it's going to be incredibly more powerful than if you was trying to push your knee out towards him. Yeah. And what the hell are you holding his shoulders for <laughs> if you're not going to use Giving them? Giving him a massage, come yeah, on. Yes, so you massage him while you're trying to put your knee in the yeah. back, so, like a... Yeah, but we so that's can, that's basically yeah. how we do a knee in in number ten. But look, I mean, go as I'm sure you were going to mention. But in, in Laogao, look at Kum. There, there is there is elbows. There is there's yeah there's elbows. There's there's also scope Chop choy, for there's elbows. But the, in Laogao, look at Kum. There's also scope to make uh, the, uh, the, the a knee technique, so to speak, uh -huh. uh, before the yeah. three you know palms and then the you know go for um but a yeah. lot of people can do it as a you can do it as a kick or a knee you know i'd sort of yeah. you know depending on what mood yeah I'm because in. your knee and you can knee you can bring your knee up to break the arm if you've got the yeah. arm yeah when you're pressing the arm down yeah oh and then you just bring the knee up yeah. and of course you, you, your leg doesn't have to be folded at the knee it just has to be the knee that contacts the elbow yeah, sure, or yeah. above the elbow yeah. just because it doesn't look like a knee the kick yeah. is too far out, so it's going to miss the target anyway. Yeah. And you can't reach it with your hand if you are kicking with your foot, because it's you know the position you're in wouldn't be long mm. enough. Mm. So it just it's logical to assume that you're bringing those that hand down, pressing down the other person's hand who may be holding you or not, and bringing the elbow up to bear against the elbow, yeah. uh, the the knee sorry up to the yeah. elbow. Yeah. And consequently, you know, it's going to break or damage the the joint of the, yeah, the elbow yeah. and and so things like that yeah they're, they're very useful but they're within the syllabus and people people don't train them yeah, right? right because yeah. they, they get their pads on they start fighting you can't do elbows and knees in that kind of fighting mm -hmm. they don't practice throws they don't practice takedowns What's, they don't practice sweeps i think it's from there's a good i think I, re I remember doing it at the summer course with john john russell mm -hmm. um a while back and i think he i think he took a section out of buck buck king 
Buck King Kong. Buck King Kong. Buck King- okay. I say King Kong. <laughs> Sorry, Buck King Kong. I call, I call it Bunk King Kong. Yeah, you do. That's where I get it from. But there's a sequence in that where I think, you, you know, you're stepping forward, you're doing an elbow, and then you're doing a backward and a, and a, and a round elbow and stuff like that, which yeah. I always thought was quite good on the summer course. But uh-huh. essentially, in what we tend to say with elbows is there's really sort of only five ways you can do an elbow. And, and you know, it's hard to explain it on a podcast but we've done a video well, on youtube but yeah you're, you're but talking we, about directions yeah, yeah directions directions uses. now yes but but we can you know we, we have to be careful how we say things right because we mm-hmm. can say there's only you know how many different punches can you do you can do a straight punch you could do a circular punch you can do an, but is an uppercut a circular mm-hmm. punch but from a different angle what about an overhand is that a circular punch but from a different angle mm-hmm. so yeah. we've got varying different angles of things so yeah, yeah, if we're talking about directions, so we say there's five directions well, yeah. we can apply. Uh, well, uh, well, they say also there's five ways of, of escape or five ways of five directions of moving, and that's forwards, backwards, sideways, one way, sideways, the other, yeah. or but, ducking down. But there's also you know, two, jumping up two doesn't more. come into it. Yeah, no, but, but yeah, you can duck, argue you, the two jumping up and ducking down. So that's seven well, the, directions. The, yeah, are, no, the fifth the fifth one is standing still, James. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That. But 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 the jumping up and down doesn't come into it, so because it's kind of dicey. But yes, of course yes, people yes. can do it. Yeah. yeah, people can do it. But but when we say there are five directions, we don't take into it. It's like there's a north, north. Uh, yeah. No, where, you, there's north, you're getting east, into south, the and shipping west. Forecast now. North, I know, northwest. But, <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm simply saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people see the compass as north, east, south, west. Yeah. What they don't see is all the other parts of that compass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So and they, they don't see the blustfully, the blustering north, gale north, west from by north. Uh, the Shetlands. <laughs> and and so on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But, and then uh, you got north, northeast, and all that kind of thing, all yeah, the way down. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not saying I'm in order, of course, because <laughs> frankly, I've forgotten them. <laughs> but but if I sat there and thought about it, I would I would discover them north, yeah. north by north, north uh, east. No, that's a film with uh, Cary Grant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So eventually, no. you get to northeast, and then you go down, yeah. and so on and but, so. But what was you know. the point again? Why are we talking? Uh, because there are lots of directions yeah. that are alternate to the actual just four moves northeast yeah. south and west because yeah. when people talk you know when you see people doing sets on a on a on a, uh, a video and yeah. they're going right i'm turning to the west to do this yeah i'm turning to the north to do that yeah what about the others yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know the bits that you turn turned like angle yeah because there's always going to be slight angles oh, no, no, no. You, you, you have yeah. to be specific in certain yeah. styles. Taekwondo. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the same situation you're using a clock, isn't it? You know, there are 12. <laughs> but then you can say, oh, it's, yeah. you know, yeah. seven minutes past or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is, it is, it's well, just a way of describing I'm things. A, I'm, on, I'm on multiple time zones when I do a set. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, so, we, so we talked about elbows and yeah, we yeah. talked about knees. And the benefits of them are, yes, strategically ideal in very close combat um they're not particularly any use beyond a very close combat obviously simply because of their height their length what about uh, what about in reach. relation to being defense the defensive use of a knee or an elbow in terms oh, absolutely. of if someone's yeah, yeah, at yeah. long range right they throw yeah. a kick at you you're out of their elbow range but their yeah, but foot is being brought to you. You can just elbow the top of it, or their that's shin. That's right. You can elbow the top of it, or of course, if you're close enough, they throw a kick. Your, you know, knee can go sideways outwards yeah. towards their the inside of their their, their kick. Yeah. So it makes it. You know, it's quite popular with uh, kickboxing, uh, oh, yeah. particularly where there are knees involved. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a quite popular kick. We did that with the, the kickboxing organisation I was with. Yeah. 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 as well and yeah, we obviously no, did um, it in Laogar yeah 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 no, it's just it's, it's interesting that the perception people's perception of elbows and knees is that they're a a lot more devastating right and I think that's purely based on like the noise they make when they hit pads etc because how do you if, define if people can generate power yes yeah. define punches being de- de- devastating because punches are also devastating but they're only devastating if they're you know thrown properly mm. and if they impact properly with the with the you know a 
decent amount of energy otherwise a punch is a punch yeah. and it really doesn't make any difference and so many elbows you know it can be completely useless because people completely misinterpret the range mm. yeah um you know they can be nullified very quickly mm -hmm. so it is a shame that, that people love the idea of doing knees and things but don't understand how to do them yeah. so but yeah you know there's a, there's a thousands of techniques out there uh, that everybody claims you know that they know how to do them and yeah. you know it's it is about practice we we talked about uh not being able to utilize these so when, when i was teaching younger um you know most of the floors tended to be hard wood or concrete yeah. um i was i had a forte of sweeping i could never teach sweeping very much because i demonstrated the sweep and then people would just be falling all over the place yeah. no head guards all this kind of thing so it, it was very dangerous to do mm -hmm. and so the only time you could do it is if you had a place with mats mm -hmm. and then of course you had to take into account you were hiring a hall you had to get your own mats yeah. nowadays of course people get their full-time gyms majority of people get full-time well a lot of people get full-time gyms certainly in the americas they they that's all they do oh yeah most yeah. it's very that's some lovely few. that's some beautiful full-time yeah. gyms where you are yeah absolutely and they yeah we just shame there ain't no bloody <laughs> talent i mean some of them are brilliant don't get me wrong but but of course some of them just just show off the mm. uh, the gym and make the sale it's the same as any gym with weights and stuff isn't it yeah, oh, yeah. they show you around they show you the the saunas they show you the you know the swimming pool i mean if you walk around a gym and it's got a swim a heated swimming pool you're you're hooked oh, and that's cool. it oh yeah and and especially if it makes good coffee hey do you're you hooked. remember do you remember when we used to train and do the Malvern class with uh, bruce on a friday night and and, and we yeah. used to go to the sauna and the steam room afterwards yeah. that was great that. yeah absolutely that was the end of the week treat wasn't it eh? um, yeah it was anyway right we can talk about and, and uh, in another podcast i do want to actually expand on that point about um does the environment in which we train limit us which is what you're it, saying about teaching sweeps yeah if you've got mats if you haven't if you've got facilities and whatnot but we're, well we, if we can can we save that for another uh, podcast yeah we now? can but all i can say is that, um i'm hoping when we we're with our first guest we are going to really you know he is going to show how things are now changing you know it's it's late in my time but it's it's still time for him and honestly you know the things that you that people just neglect because of the environment yeah it's phenomenal on how many things get neglected Absolutely. and and of course that's why a lot of styles end up doing barely anything and and that's why a lot of kung fu people end up doing just kickboxing because they can't uh maintain their syllabus they can't maintain their kung fu style yeah. they end up doing kickboxing yeah. but here we have a guy who has well, done we don't everything even know he if he's coming it. on yet we don't know we, do we know. haven't been confirmed. yeah i've, I've confirmed it oh, all right all right hey, just checking. i've already just confirmed it all right all right anyway, so yeah right let can we thank you for that thank you okay. i'm doing my hostly well, duties thank now. you for telling you thank that you we've confirmed me. a guest <laughs> Yeah. yeah thanks yeah. thanks for letting me know <laughs> well when he comes on we'll do an introduction for him okay but you know things might happen before then he may he may not be capable but i know that he is willing to come okay. on and he's awesome. so happy and i also know what he's going to be talking about and i can guarantee to you that he's got you know all the qualifications to you know talk about it and um you know i think it's going to make the you know instead of us just bitching it's, it's going to make... bring a bit of class to the proceedings it's going to bring yeah it's going to bring a bit of class in there yeah. all right, all right. Yeah. listen we got i want to just press on i want to talk very quickly and then we'll wrap up i want to talk about ham uh, kick blocks one and two and I, I just want you to sort of explain why we why we do them and and, and you know so for all you laugar people listening you know this one's for you if you're not laugar um you know stay tuned because i'm sure we'll sort of explain some principles you know relative to what we're doing with them mm -hmm. um so steve can you just go ahead and explain to us what we're doing in kick blocks one and two uh, uh, you know why are they okay. why are they the first and the second kick blocks what's what, what are we well doing? There's, there's i don't think any have been chosen to to be sort of in any particular order but they are the most basic principles guy's going to do a front kick with his right leg you're going to move out out of line okay mm -hmm. yeah. so rather than just step back you're literally moving to the side out of line 
uh, you can't take your foot any further than your front foot so you're taking your right foot back and you're sitting in a horse stance why do we sit in a horse stance because we're trying to consolidate a position yeah. of strength so that we can throw out the, the cover or the attack the counter now everyone sees the block with the hand with the palm as a simply a block a, a knock away of the, uh, the leg yeah. it isn't what it is is in your first form you are going to do a second palm which is with the what's called a big fish which is the thumb area okay oh. and you're going to strike it imagine that you are uh, banging an apple or, a, or an orange off your off your bicep and and straightening your arm to knock that orange yeah, into the sky yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the type of thing yeah. so that is how you are performing that palm and basically you're moving out of the way you're consolidating your position you're throwing the palm now where are you throwing the palm you're throwing the palm to the thigh okay so you're striking the thigh why do we strike the thigh the reason we strike the thigh a it's the first thing to move b it's the slowest thing to move and c it's prior to the kick mm starting so the quicker you attack the quicker you can finish the fight yeah. so basically as the guy lifts his leg as he's kicking the thighs are the first thing that moves that you see straight away yeah try it, try it, yeah. catching a foot it's too fast yeah. okay we're not trying to catch the foot we're simply striking at the calf once we're struck at that calf oh hang on hang on hang on we're not striking yeah, at the calf you're striking above the sorry 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 at the thigh yeah yeah I, I always use funny words, you useless do, words, you? right? Yeah, I did say I did say thigh at the beginning, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you said thigh. I at the did. Beginning. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I would. I would. Then have I started you. talking about calves. I would have called yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, so we are striking at the thigh, of course, because it's the first thing to move. Just to reiterate, the car, the, the the thigh is the first thing to move. So we're striking at that with our palm. Then, as the leg goes down to the floor, because ouch. Yeah. we're going to think about or he might want to step you want to put it down he's going to move you've knocked it anyway you're yeah. going to then throw your kick when you throw your kick you're using your shin to kick the top of exactly the same thigh right okay yeah. so you're hitting at the side of one of the quadriceps and you're hitting the front quadriceps yeah. and when you do that your toes will naturally poke into his groin so in effect you've actually kicked him or struck him should I say three times in your defense yeah. as an attack so there is no defense there it's simply a countermeasure the guy kicks you yeah. you strike the leg that's kicking you then attack the leg that's kicking okay so a couple that's of points one. that I just want to clear up that's with number one yeah. that's great now um, as before with the kit, with the hand blocks we suggested that the that the attack is the most important thing now yeah we absolutely learn to do a front kick you've got a target in front of somebody um equally the defense you know you can argue is is, is just as important right the movement okay yeah. because a lot of people um it is about taking your body off the line right yeah now a question why would we go into a horse stance in uh, a, a fighting uh you know skit in a fighting uh you know scenario. why would we practice a horse dance at all if we couldn't well, see the the, the point is is that we are at the side yeah. so we're not really considering the fact that we are going to get kicked in the groin now right. because the guy is doing a front kick and it's now passing us the other kick he's standing on so it's not going to be very easy for him to do that our groin will be covered or open at any point in time no matter what stance we're on Mm. so it, it's it's a consolidation of a good position mm. to be able to throw enough energy with that palm strike yeah. to actually make it viable yeah. if you you can't take your foot behind okay making it you know it's first of all it's gone too far and, and it wouldn't have made any difference he just still kick the front leg yeah so you can't take the back leg further than you know the same level as the other one yeah that's yeah. what makes it a horse stance yeah. so when you sink into that horse stance you've practice you've blocked the kick he's landed now as he's landed that foot from the first strike if you are simply turning your feet you're now already in a fighting stance you from the horse stance twisting you're already in a fighting stance and so be able to deliver the shin and the the kick to the groin with the toes okay now people will argue that project or that concept of 
of how I've described that kick because they can't do it. Now the main reason they won't be able to do it is they're standing too far away. Well I was just going to say range. Now exactly. you've suggested it's a shin kick but mm -hmm. the reason it's a shin kick is because of the you're range. so close. Yeah. Yep. Now, you're so close and you can adjust yourself remember you've already struck him course, once yeah. there's absolutely no reason why you can't you don't once you've done that strike in that horse yeah. stance there's no reason why you can't now move a leg adjust yourself yeah. to throw the kick but he's already in your court he's already close to yeah. you so you can now kick him but you see you won't be able to strike that thigh yeah. if you're standing too far away so if you try to you're standing too far away what happens is you bring your head forward and that becomes a target. You never ever put your head forward. You always keep your head, your body straight. Yeah. Okay. So the stance, your feet and hips and legs will make the position. Your body should always be pretty much with the exception of one or two moves should be straight up to yeah. maintain your balance yeah. and posture. So when you're striking from there, you're keeping yourself at a decent range. But at the same time, you're able to attack him okay. can, or counter-attack him. Can we suggest that when we say horse stance, right, can we use it in a loose interpretation? Meaning, can we say it's a high horse stance? Because we don't we mean... We can if we're not going to practice hard enough. Right. Well, OK. <laughs> yeah. But, you, you know, do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, if we're yeah. looking at small, like the smaller the movement, the faster the fight, bum, like that. Yeah, uh, now yeah. I, I absolutely see where you're coming from, but remember, this is the f one of the first kick blocks we do, yeah. and so we're trying to teach uh, beginners, beginners yes, sure. to train hard. Sure. Now, if we say at that point in time it's a, you know, a, a high horse, they'll never get to do the horse, yeah, right. and they'll always wonder why. Yeah. But it's a good application of the practice that they will do with a basic walk and punch or a basic. Uh, horse run stance and punch I should say yeah, yeah. where they are actually sitting in the horse stance and throwing punches out they'll always think why am I sitting in this position and it's just simply as a training regimen mm. but when it comes to actually applying that horse stance they've got a place there they can apply it and it isn't necessary that they have to always maintain that because obviously as they build up speed yeah. as you rightly say the the legs won't be so bent yeah, and yeah. the range won't be so far away, yeah. and the movements won't be so large. They'll all be much smaller. So yes, then, mm -hmm. as we learn to do it at speed, fine, but let's get the basics in. Sure. The more you train those basics, the better you're going to be. Sure. Can, can, can I also ask you then, you've said um, strike the thigh. Now, yeah, yeah we strike the thigh. But c c if, you, if you strike you know, more on the knee than the thigh, that's still valid and viable right knees made of bone it's going I, to hurt you I just as much that, but, yeah but you know yeah how close do we have to just above the knee yes yeah. it's, it's great just above the knee it's it's a great place yeah. to hit and also if you cannot throw the palm properly yeah. uh you haven't got the energy to throw the palm properly a really nice slap is good yeah because right. that stings yeah right but of course, it's very difficult to practice that in the classroom. Yeah. So you've got to repeat the action well, and you've yeah. got to feel that movement. movement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, you worth, can, of course, yeah. always practice palm strikes against pads and so on, yeah, as sure, we've already sure. recognized. Um, it's worth saying that if you're doing this strike to the, to the thigh, once you've mm -hmm. turned your body to the side, etc., a lot of people, if they don't, if they don't train this palm, they're going to they're going to bend their fingers back. Which is a yeah. bit of a, you know, uh -huh. um, you know, a, 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 you know, a common mistake. I look, you know, they, yeah. they'll, they'll brush with the fingers as opposed to That's right. strike it, with the palm. Yeah, as, as I described, it's called the, the large fish or the big fish, and that's basically your the palm area below your thumb. Right. So you're literally hitting with the the just you know, at the end of your thumb. So what's the You've little got that fish that large then? mash. Is little fish is the, the, the side edge of your, the, uh, by the, underneath the little finger. And why do they call it big fish, little fish? Well, the little fish is, your little finger is wiggling around and that's his tail. Yeah. And the, the, the rest of that end of that yeah. hand is called the little fish because you're the big fish, which is the thumb, 
and when you look at the thumb and the palm around it uh, you know the muscle around the bottom of the thumb yeah. it forms like a yin yin sign yin sign yeah, and yeah, a yang yeah. sign yeah. with the other thumb yeah. and when you put them together they form the yin and yang right. emblem yeah. okay the sign of the yin and yang and and so um, that's why they're called the big fish uh, the big fish for for that reason that one right. the little fish is just simply because it's related to the big fish um. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just wanted you to explain that. <laughs> I love it. Um can we can we acknowledge then obviously that the the the, the palm strike in number 1 hand block that is is the ninth move in the first set. Uh, yeah, it's in the first moves, set. Okay. Now yeah. when we look at the genesis of that move in the first set, we actually do start with our fingers pointed down, don't we? That's right. Yeah. And as we And that's why your fingers that's why it's good for blocking the limbs yeah. because your fingers don't have to come into it right and that's why you 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 can't be pushing you anything with your fingers right. you'll just bend your fingers back so it's your the fingers are in the way chop your fingers off yeah and you'll still be able to do kung fu the only thing you won't be able to do is grabs yeah and Make finger this. strikes yeah, and fingers right. yeah. Um, then then is there a point just just sidetracking onto that palm strike in the first set is there a uh -huh. point in which that palm strike becomes uh, a useless technique what I'm getting at is if you raise it a certain height relative to, to to the start of it if it remains upside down yes but you see everything rotates so as you're doing a palm mm. strike you're doing as a palm yes but if in the event uh, you're just simply bringing the hand up upside down mm. it will eventually rotate until it becomes like a willow palm right okay so it's like a circle but yeah. that's a completely different situation the, yeah, then the, it's the same kind of technique but yeah. it, it it evolves into a different it technique. Evolves into the palm different, itself yeah. the fingers are remaining down right there's a there's another palm in the technique after the the fuck after the the hooking or the the harvest if you hand. want to call it the harvest hand whereby you do the harvest hand you're loading the wrist and then you're palming and that's with the small fish or the that's, little fish right. with the edge that that leading edge of the palm so th and yeah. so that's a totally different kind of palm sure I just wanted to make the distinction for people looking for it in the set and say that's it but okay yeah, yeah. right um any any other points you want to uh, make you know any mistakes people do uh, the biggest mistake of that one is range and the other thing is when you first start a train get your partner to stand there and just like lightly do the kick yeah. by stamping against his stomach and pushing him backwards okay lightly i emphasize that lightly you're just pushing him backwards if you want to train it get him to hold a shield mm. and kick him fine but you're stamping into his body now of course you might genuinely you may choose to kick with the ball of your foot or you may choose to kick to the groin with your toes pointing down all of them still follow the same direction they still are the same kick the only problem is you can't practice actually pushing against the target yeah. if you're doing a groin kick because mm. he's not going to be happy <laughs> so the stamp is the much easiest one yeah. to gain your distance and also get to see that you're kicking straight yeah. get to see that you're not going to fall over when you kick him yeah. and so on yeah. and so that gives you the range and then once you've got that range he knows where you're kicking he knows what's going to happen you are kicking him directly to the center then you know start moving yeah. then you can try different kicks once he starts responding to that knee lift as soon as you go to kick your knee is naturally going to move first as soon as he sees that knee he's responding by attacking your leg okay. your thigh with his palm if he's too far away and that is the biggest problem he's always going to either hurt his fingers or is going to lean his head forward or he's yeah. going to end up trying to block something that isn't there because the kick from the knee downwards to a foot moves far more in a in a in a you know kind of swinging state yeah. than the knee does yeah so it's the knee or rather above the knee the thigh that is the target well, yeah and not the foot well think of most it, people make that mistake yeah think of it as like um, a pair of nunchucks isn't it like the, yeah. the shin and the foot are, are, are after they're the going to be a lot more powerful be a lot yeah more powerful than the and fast yeah yeah um, see and they're gonna and they're gonna be late as well they're gonna yeah you, if you haven't reacted by the time he's lifted his knee he yeah. is going to kick you yeah 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 um, you can't move fast enough so 
um, just a, a point that I, I, I think applies more to sort of, you know, senior grades, etc. is, you know, be very careful what you're doing uh, with your with your hands and your cover when you're doing this one because you see yeah. a lot of people are focusing solely on um, just doing the action, doing the block, doing the kick. They're not mm. giving much thought as to what their hands are doing. And like we always say, if you're doing something with your legs, focus on your hands. If you're doing something with your hands, yeah. focus on what you're doing with your legs. Um, yeah. uh, I don't know, uh, but uh, anyway, um, let's move on, shall we? If that's all right with you. Yeah. Let's go number on to number two. two and uh, he's doing a round kick. Yeah. Or a turning kick, as we call it. Karate might call it a round kick, and so it's coming around the, the side. Remember, it travels in exactly the same direction for us mm. as a front kick because we're not going to turn it around because it's so easy to press down at that point, it's so easy to telegraph, and it's also much weaker. So, mm. we're literally throwing the knee up exactly the same as a front kick at the last second. We're going to twist on the foot that we're standing on and that will divert the kick in range around rather than up. Okay, right. that's as simple as that. So it's a very fast turning kick. It yeah. doesn't have to be going, you know, sideways. It just has to be going upwards against, you know, the target. Yeah. Because remember, it doesn't have to be a high kick. No. As people try to make them high kicks and then they're much slower. Okay, so the guy's gonna lift his thigh in exactly the same way. Guess what you're gonna do this time? You're gonna step back and you're gonna strike it okay. again, but this time with the outer edge, with the little fish yeah. uh, of your palm. And so you're rotating, and this would be the first movement of the first set. Right. You're rotating your palm, pressing, Could... striking down. Right, and then you're and finishing so... with, sorry, continue. You're gonna kick him straight in the... Straight in the knackers, in the J-cups. Yeah. Um, yeah. A couple of points. I've got. I've got a question for you on that. You said step back. Now yeah, I like to you, say consolidate. Yeah, 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 yeah right. So yeah. I'm going to say this. Do you mean consolidate? But yeah, because you know, the, the as yeah, well, we want to close the gap, right? Yeah. So we want to move forward with the strike. Well, we we aren't moving at all. The the strike okay. is staying right. where it is. All right. All now <laughs> We're going yeah. back to that argument again, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, sorry, because yeah. basically the attacker is coming forward. We yeah. don't need to go backwards. Yeah. All we need to do is be in a string, strong position mm. to strike. Yeah. If we're not in a strong position when we strike, that strike will not be strong. Yeah. So as he coming around, all we're doing is consolidating the stance, striking the hand down against uh, the knee. Mm. And again, it's about range. Yeah. You know, these are very close range techniques. When the guy's trying to you, give yeah. you a good kick in, yeah. he's going to be quite close. He's not going to be at a long range. No. If he's at a long range, you'll see it coming for miles. Okay. We don't want you to see it coming. We want you to learn how to defend against a very close proximity kick. Okay. And we want you to react immediately to the movement of his thigh yeah. and not wait for the whole strength of his leg to develop because you are wasting your time and you are going to get hurt we're, a lot more. We're intercepting before it's it's had a chance to, to, to yeah. uh, mature. As he, moves, kick, yeah. as he moves, hit him. Now, That's it. Yeah. Let me ask you a question about this then. So mm -hmm. we've, we've, uh, you know, we've said we're consolidating and we're, we're striking down. Yeah. Would you accept to a certain degree within kick block number two, your head has to kind of drop forward as you do that strike slightly. Do you understand what I mean? As, as who does what strike? Your, the defender's head, as you strike yeah. down on that leg, right? Yeah. The, the defender's head does have to get a bit closer this time. So you're almost well, that giving them out. your head. No. Not, no, no I, I'm not I saying you're agree. giving them your head, but no, I'm no, saying... No, but, you, yeah. I know what you're saying, but I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. Right. And the, the reason I'm going to disagree with you yeah. is because we are trying to maintain posture. If we can't reach that kick, okay, the kick's not reaching us. Okay. Yeah, so it's not going to come high enough. It might be a low kick. Yeah. There's a completely different technique for that. Right. But if, if the guy is bringing his leg up and you see the knee coming up, you're immediately going to respond to the knee by consolidating your stance. Now, you can consolidate your stance by taking your legs bending your legs more rather than bending your head forward right okay so yeah. your 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 arms are easily going to reach beyond your 
your groin right they're going to sort okay. of be mid mid down your thigh yeah if they're mid down your thigh when they're straight yeah then they'll be mid down his thigh okay yeah pretty much okay so so no it's it it should reach if it doesn't reach get closer right okay yeah no just a point i just wanted to suggest that out there because uh I, yeah people I see a will ask lot that of question people, yeah i see a lot of people yeah. when they do it they're really leaning forward with their head now yeah. we've you know any anyway. um yeah because they're lazy with their legs right right right, right. Mm. um the uh, i think to be honest you know the kick to the groin etc i tell you what yeah. what is no, we'll talk about that on another on another uh, uh, when we start doing the more advanced kick blocks. Um, are you happy with that? Is there anything else you'd like to say about number two? Because really no, it's, it's pretty, it, pretty it's, simple. it's a very simple movement. Uh, keep your guard up and uh, ensure that you're going to follow it up. Because remember, you kick him in the groin. Mm. You can, you know, nobody practices takedowns and stuff like that. And I have to say, I, I really wish in my time that I would have loved to have, you know, made that uh, kind of important because when people are falling down, we want to help them down to the floor, but we don't want them to fall down of their own accord. Yeah. We want to make sure they land on the head so they don't get up. We want to make sure that they injure their arms so they don't get up or their yeah. elbow or, you know, their shin yeah. uh, or their, their an ankles or whatever. Okay. And, uh, and, and often when we talk about self-defense, we were talking earlier about how people stand there when they throw a punch and then they stand waiting for the guy to do loads of stuff. Mm -hmm. There's got to be some theatrical license because you can't actually hurt someone to make the move. Uh, some do, of course, because they're usually not their own students. They're usually people <laughs> brought students to the course and uh, they get injured for them. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, you know, when you, when you hit someone with a knuckle, uh, you demonstrate it, show them how it would hurt, and maybe even tap them to show how it would hurt. And they go, oh, yeah, I can feel that. And then other people literally throw the technique and saying, I'm going to hit him here. Mm. And the, the idiot stands for it. Yeah. Right? So he picks on morons who, are, well, I didn't well, say morons. That's not fair. Victims. They, they, uh, they're victims, yeah, <laughs> who are prepared to, to, you know, sort of blow that guy's trumpet. Please, mm. if a guy's going to hurt you, you know, yeah, but, get but, hurt of your own accord, not from his. Yeah, but we're talking yeah. about specific techniques now that really will hurt. If, you, if you're talking about training takedowns, etc., yeah, of course you're going to have to throw people, get thrown on yeah, the floor, yeah. etc. We, 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 yeah, yeah, takedowns don't necessarily hurt. What they do is end the fight. It makes it more difficult for mm. the person. Now, of course, then there's a, uh, there's a matter of conjecture there because... Of course, the guy's going to get up again. Yeah. Now, you can stop him getting up now, depending on how good you are or how intent you are or what kind of situation it is. You, once you've gone him down, you can run. Yeah. Okay. Or you can kick him okay. once down. Or you can you know, choose to so, practice locks uh, and, so, and, so why, and holds. Why, why have you brought this up after talking about number two? Were you going to make the suggestion that you can, if you want, add to, to the end of the hand box, kick blocks? You no no not just the hand blocks and kick blocks but everything you, right. you do. I I really you know I have been talking recently uh, to our guest. Well, he's not a and, guest yet. <laughs> all right, all right. You keep saying that, but uh, yeah, we've got a reputation, you know. I know. <laughs> we've got a really bad reputation. <laughs> yeah, he may not want to come on after this. But yeah, the issue is. Um, Let's just forget the fact that he's going to be a guest. Let's just forget it. Let's just turn around and talk about martial arts as they are today. My friend, my new guest, okay, he is going to describe how he, his journey has taken him to a situation where he doesn't, he, he has employed his Kung Fu continuously through the years he's been training to develop more about follow-ups after the event so say you're doing sticky hands you want to get people down often with me I sweep them they fall down we start again we carry on never really think about the continuation of the fight because you haven't got the environment to do it in he's had the environment to train in for many years he's got his own gym at his house and so on and he is able to practice with individuals but he's also gone to various organizations and trained with them yeah. as well and has bettered them 
right. because of his ability to do sticky hands with Lau. He's able to feel the movement as the other person attempts to take him down. Okay. So we talked previously in other podcasts about you know MMA and how they like to sit on people's faces and so on. And of course, we both agree, both myself and my friend, that if you're out in the street, nobody <coughs> goes around to parties on their own. So if you're going to try jumping on someone and holding them down in a lock, mm. just expect their friends to come and defend them. Mm. Just expect their friends to come and kick you in the face while you're doing it. Yeah. Because it's not going to be easy to do it with more than one person. Yeah. So that is why I don't particularly promote um, locking and lying down and, and all the kind of jiu-jitsu type of movements. How I, however, I've always promoted uh, leg locks, you know, switching, pushing your legs behind the other person's leg, pressing them down with your knee, taking them on the outside, sweeping, and th you know, throwing from that position, yeah. and so on. And in the self-defense, we do, you know, throws down, twisting the yeah. head yeah. round, and bringing them down to the ground, and so on. But we never follow it from there. Now, now, this guy, he's followed it from there, and okay. he's made a damn good job of it, and he's created his uh, his uh, a curriculum which okay. is. Cool in conjunction with Lao principles, absolutely work, and I am gonna promote that like nobody's okay. business. Well, that's great. Well, we can talk about that um, mm -hmm. when he comes on, and I am really yeah. excited about that. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make the point, and I genuinely am, I'm not cutting you off, but I just think, no. let's just let's talk about it when, if he comes, when he comes. Now, of course. Yeah. What, what I, I was, you sort of, you went into this, from we were talking about that the the kick blocks now a lot of people will always say yeah yeah but i can do this after the kick block i can do that after the hand block i can do this yeah. now at yeah. what point if we start thinking like that obviously it's a great um uh mental exercise it's a great sort of theoretical thing not theory if you can do it right we can look at oh options options but at the end of the day it's syllabus like you know do you, how 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 far do you want to go with it you know well do you, do you see what i mean like yeah not, yeah it's yeah, a bad the, thing i'm not saying uh -huh. it's a bad thing the thing is syllabus is a vehicle we have to yeah. keep repeating that course, it's a vehicle yeah. so how far do you drive your vehicle yeah. it's 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 totally dependent on you okay. i mean we have always you know people who train in the, the syllabus you know, t by rote, will always perform the syllabus to a degree where, okay, that's all he's shown in the syllabus. But what about the rest of the techniques in addition to that in yeah. other parts of the syllabus, yeah. which, can, which can then be employed, which they should be yeah. employed to continue the fight to its end conclusion. If you stop halfway through, then you're, the other person is able to recover and then mm. continue and retaliate oh, with a far more Absolutely. dangerous uh, my, perception of my, you. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the this is the point. I, and I th the, the the thing is, people don't. Okay, they don't because half the time they haven't got the facilities, half the time they haven't got the time. So they are doing the syllabus to what is required at that time, mm. and then after that, yeah. you know, then they start to apply. I, but but only some do. Yeah, I th you, yeah, spot on there. I I, I want to sort of say as well that a lot of people, I mean, we're talking about the basic syllabus, right? That's what we're talking about. If you're going to do the basic syllabus, get it right. Get it right. Train yeah. it. Understand it. Don't seek then. Oh, I've done. I've done it. I can do it now. I'll add this. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Don't yeah. start running before you can walk. You know, uh -huh. get it right first. Focus on the syllabus. It's there for a reason. We've discussed this. Yeah, that's but, right. But and then, you, once you can do it, add to it. But right, yeah, this is the thing. People have always kind of looked at me and said, "Well, you know, you don't do these big sets, so you you can't know all the syllabus." No, the syllabus was always there. Syllabus has been added to. Okay. Now, when people start making up their own sets, which is one of the things I was totally against. Because when you watch people make up the sets, guess what they do? They use Laogar techniques. Well, of course, but the Laogar techniques are already in sets. Yeah. Do you need another direction for them? Do you need to take them in a different, why don't you just take them and use them individually in the self-defense situation, right. as opposed to trying to apply them in another longer set. So the more you practice that longer set, the less you practice the shorter sets. And the, the less you yeah. practice the shorter sets, the less you practice the individual movements. Right. And so 
you end up having a lot of stuff to look at you know window shopping mm. you just don't you can't use the techniques yeah. so it's really important that you make those strategies very short now yeah. I always get this where people will turn around to me and say oh you know yeah but Steve you know you don't do that set you know you you've forgotten the five animal set or you don't do the five animal set so and I go okay you show me that set and I'll tell you what them is for but then I'll also tell you where it is in the syllabus mm. okay? okay so you know yeah there's always going to be like the odds and sods that are not in part of the syllabus yeah. but they're not going to be relevant yeah but you you I remember you saying um, and I thought it was a really good analogy you said um, we, we don't have to keep writing the recipe down you just have to cook yeah you know what I mean yeah, that's and, it. So when, yeah, same that's thing. all people do, isn't it? Yeah, all people do is keep on writing the recipe. Oh, you know, keep on. Oh, well, now if I had this, had that, and the other, but they can't actually get get onto the oven. They can't literally. They can't cook. They yeah. can't make it work. Yeah, they, and it never tastes good when it when they do manage it yeah. because they're too busy trying to swap things and change things, and they're unsure about how that bit goes and how much of it goes in. Mm. So th this is the biggest problem with martial arts. Is, and we talk about this so often where people do these huge sets in demonstrations. There is a place for them in demonstrations, but please don't turn around and then tell me you, you can do it in reality because you're spending too much time practicing these. And then, and then, of course, you get other people, you know, on the other side of the coin, when they're showing techniques that don't actually work, and and then the, <laughs> they're trying to do them as sets, yeah. and they just look diabolical. Yeah. So, you know, this martial arts is a free and open world, and everybody is free to do what they want. But remember, you have a responsibility to pass on real knowledge. You don't have the right just because you think you can to teach people bull that you know doesn't work that you can't prove work anyway and that will never work for them in a month of Sundays so yeah, just no. face up to it you, you do it yourself like the people like you know the people who do the big wushu sets they enjoy doing what they do they get out and they do it as demonstrations let's see you do demonstrations with the stuff that you are professing to teach and let's see how good it is because it probably wouldn't even look pretty and it most definitely wouldn't work so uh, stop kidding everybody else and then you'll stop kidding yourself right well on that note i think you've used bullshit more times than master ken you know <laughs> <laughs> stop the grind grind stuff guys we'll 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 book out we'll book out we'll we'll go we've got to go we've uh, we've drowned on a lot but you've had it all today people haven't you? you've had a bit of bitching a bit of bit of technical knowledge hey eh? hey eh? it's yeah you get your money's worth with the kung fu please podcast. please check out your instructors please look on youtube and if if you have any sense just be wary that's all when you're going uh, taking a load of questions and the other thing is we're always here if people want to know whether someone's has any capability now i'm not going to diss anybody but i'll simply send back if you send me a piece of video footage with someone doing a technique i'll critique it by all means i'll critique you send one of me as well and i'll critique it but it's really <laughs> important honestly that you yeah. oh jesus absolutely well, look out for your, look out for yourself in martial arts good luck with you guys absolutely 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 it's all about uh, it's all about you guys okay um guys if you if you enjoyed that and we 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 hope you did we hope you got something from it please do us a favor go on um podbeans podbean um like our subscribe to our podcast um go on our facebook page give us a like go on youtube subscribe to us all that good stuff you know write a review whatever say about oh we love the podcast or they're absolute idiots we hate the podcast whatever we don't care but please just do us that favor that would be brilliant and you know guys this this thing only carries on because you know we've got some we've got we've got a base of listeners now and you know we uh, we do genuinely love uh, talking about kung fu and we hope that you uh, kind of enjoy the enjoy the the irrelevant chat um, yeah, and someone someone's got to say what we say right someone's got to say it everybody is so you know pc and oh you know you can't yeah. talk about people no. we're not mentioning any names we don't intend to disrespect people 
but you know unless they disrespect themselves okay and and a lot of the time that's really the case absolutely so absolutely. please you know we exist for a bit of controversy been a bit too and we're always wow. first to apologize of course <laughs> wherever we go yeah wherever yeah. we go we go twice because we always have to go back to apologize <laughs> Guys, thanks ever so much for joining us for another episode of the Kung Fu Podcast with me, James Still, and my teacher, Mr. Steve Newby. Okay, take care, guys. Have a great All one. Best. Bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Concentrate on your enemy's weak points. The eyes, the throat, the knackers. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Kung Fu Podcast. If you like that and you want to find out more about us, you can head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or YouTube and find us under SJN Martial Arts. And also guys, this podcast is available on Podbean and iTunes. So, until next time, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again on the Kung Fu Podcast. Karate punch is like an iron bar, whack. A kung fu punch is like an iron chain with an iron ball attached to the end and it goes whack. <laughs>